Well, another spacecraft is now on Mars. Chinese state media says China landed its rover on the red planet overnight, becoming the second country to successfully do so. China has successfully landed a rover on Mars, joining the U.S. and the former Soviet Union as the only other countries to land on the red planet. The U.S. and China are clearly in a political competition here on Earth, so it should not be surprising that it has now also become part of the space aspect. China is the newcomer with a Mars program that started in 2006, but the country has big plans for its first mission called Tianwen-1. The China National Space Administration says it took more than 17 minutes after landing the rover to send signals to ground controllers. Now that it's on Mars, it will collect data from the planet's soil and atmosphere. The rover is equipped with six scientific instruments, including a high-resolution topography camera. So if the Zhurong rover lands and operates on Mars, that means China will have done more and faster in less time than the U.S. This success wouldn't be just a point of national pride, but would also get the country closer to accomplishing other space goals, including building a moon base and its own international space station. Chinese scientists were seen celebrating the touchdown. Plans call for the rover to stay in the lander for a few days before rolling down a ramp for its first exploration. It will join the American rover that arrived on Mars in February. The fact that Tianwen-1 is an orbiter, lander and rover all in one is a very gutsy move for a first mission. This is, compared to the other stories that we often talk about, like you were saying, much more benign and a really great achievement that shows in many ways the ingenuity. I would argue less about the Chinese Communist Party than more about many of the brilliant Chinese scientists who made this happen. So what China did by successfully landing a rover on Mars was something that the United States did in the 70s. So it's not a Sputnik moment, a reference to that famous satellite launch that the Soviets did in the 50s that really sped up U.S. scientific research and development. But this is certainly a sign that China is playing this game at a very, very high level. And one of China's main focuses is getting familiar with the new planet. It has a pretty standard set of instruments that will help Chinese scientists understand what it's like to operate at Mars. China is bringing better tech to Utopia Planitia than when NASA did decades ago. The technology on the Zhurong rover uh, is probably similar to what was on the Spirit and Opportunity rovers that NASA flew a few years ago. And it, it's still fairly modern tech. It's very difficult to know if what Beijing says it's looking for in space, which is peaceful development with the rest of the world, is what they're actually looking for, uh, or if it is a question of being a great power, being the greatest power, and using do potential dominance in space to exert influence over other countries. I, I think, in many ways, the space race will reflect U.S.-China tensions more broadly. And the worse things are, the more contentious things will be in space. Even though in some respects the U.S. space technology is still the most advanced, the missions that China is executing are actually very impressive now. So they've been catching up very quickly 